Hey guys, it's Peter Cunha, your New Jersey real estate giant, broker owner of Open Doors Realty. I am super excited to have my buddy, uh, Kate Avron, on right now. We know each other uh, from a networking group uh, that specializes in uh, divorce type situations. Uh, Kate, for people that don't know you, why don't you just kind of tell them what you do? Because I can't explain it. I call you a couples counselor. You're telling me psychotherapist. I say psychologist. You say no. Why don't you give everybody kind of the 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 real answer? Uh, uh, thanks for having me. Um, I am a licensed social worker um, that works as a psychotherapist. Um, I work at Lotus Blossom Psychotherapy on uh, Route 35 in Eatontown, which is actually Main Street. Um, and we help, uh, we are a, a wellness center for women, um, and we help uh, women of all ages uh, from pretty much preteen up through uh, senior. And um, I am a couples counselor, uh, as well as handling a variety of other issues, such as anxiety, depression, um, which is kind of a, that's very prevalent nowadays. Um, how, how much do you kind of contribute to COVID? How much do I contribute what to COVID? Like uh, the anxiety and the depression that you're seeing now, because I, I have a, I mean, you just started, this is what I love about our conversations. You tell me a couple of things that I'm like, hold on a second. I got questions. <laughs> so anxiety and depression really um, hit the senior population, um, you know, really extensively, I would say. Um, many of them living in um, 55 and older communities were pretty much shut off from society. Um, and I uh, was working through a different agency through COVID and many of them don't have access to computers or can't afford them. And so a telephone was really their only source of communication and um it was it was tough it was very tough I, I um, know, it it sucked um i i just want to touch on your 55 plus community my heart goes out to them right um i do a lot of charity events or i shouldn't say charity events i just i kind of hang out with seniors uh down in like manchester and uh lakewood um you know the, the developments like leisure village i know a bunch of people there that volunteer to put on events. And, you know, when I have real conversations with this, because where I get involved is a lot of times they don't have wills. Uh, they they don't have an estate plan. Um, then they're talking to me about they can no longer afford or, you know, because they've been priced out. I mean, I always say like, <laughs> and I hate to, whatever, I'm going to go on camera with this. This is just me having an opinion, whatever, if you want to beat me up. It's like, I got so pissed when, you know, whatever. I don't even know if it's approved, but when college kids got the $10,000 refund, I'm like, why don't we give that to our seniors who can't make money? Right. You know, and I'm sure some, somebody that's a lot smarter than me or better connected is going to tell me I'm being stupid, but I really, you know, I have these conversations with people and it's like, I, I've had more price of egg discussions <laughs> and what a you know a dozen eggs goes for it's like a hot commodity at eight bucks <laughs> yeah I don't, know. I don't know it just doesn't seem right to me because you know I, i'm always that you know if you're younger you should be working you know and being a productive member of society and you know i know a lot of people don't agree with me so um you might be one of them i don't know <laughs> covid was really damaging for many um and seniors was just one part of one sector of you know society but um many other people were so incredibly fearful of you know all of a sudden everybody became very you know germ conscious you know germophobic with 
buying veg buying groceries in the grocery store and having to clean everything down before you brought it in the house and you know gearing up um so so anxiety was really at an all-time high um and and also depression because typically anxiety and depression go hand in hand <laughs> So you want to talk about just uh, being on the outside. I happened to break my hip during COVID. Oh, wow. It was like, you you know, th that was when, you know, you, you only immediate family members should be up at Thanksgiving, you know, like super spreader events and, you know, all this other stuff, right? And I just, I, I didn't have any contact with the outside world and sure you could FaceTime, but I was literally had a major um, emergency operation done to my leg. And I was in a hospital room for like three weeks. Then I remember somebody sent me chocolate and I didn't know who it was. And I cried. I cried because somebody took the effort to drop it off downstairs at the hospital. And the worst part about this story is I, I called somebody thinking it was them that dropped it off and thanked them. And they're like, Pete, I hate to tell you this, but that wasn't me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, all right. Uh, but we figured out who it was. And, uh, you know, somebody's like, oh, do you want me to drop you off chocolate? <laughs> so anyway, um, I saw the depression, especially like the older senior community. It's just, it's really difficult to get around. And that's why it's like, my favorite part is hearing their stories. I love people that are, you know, close to a hundred years old. Um, cause one of my favorite questions to ask them is, um, do, do, were you close to like your great grandparent or your great grand? Because now you're spanning 200 years of history and you're looking at the 1820s, 1830s, 40s. And that was when we were still like chasing Indians. <laughs> you know, like that was before any world war. I, uh, somebody told, like, I read somebody talking about the worst generation to have been born in is to be born in 1900. Oh, wow. When you turned 18, it was World War One. One. Yep. Then you had the what the Great Depression. Yep. Then you had the Spanish flu, I believe. I don't know. And again, not getting too detailed. But by the time you were 35 or 40, like it was World War Two. Two. And then you had the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and like, you know, you died at some point, right? In the 70s or 80s. Um, and it was, you know, we don't have that. I know, I know people find it really difficult in America right now. Be really grateful for what you have, right? Because, <laughs> yep. you know, it's everything's perspective. You know, the guy that, you know, doesn't like his shoes looks over and the guy doesn't have feet. You know, it's like, be, be really, be really grateful for what you do have. Um, so, all right. I want to ask you a few more questions. Um, we're in this networking group called the National Association of Divorce Professionals. We'll give them a shout out. Uh, we are the Monmouth County chapter that meets once a week in Red Bank at uh, Ellie's Backyard. Great event. If you know anybody that needs help, there's a lot of professionals there. How did you wind up uh, getting involved with them? And what does kind of the group mean to you? Well, it is, um, as you said, it is a, it's a great group of uh, people. Um, and the fact, you know, we all have kind of a common goal, which is to um, be of service to the community at large uh, for anyone who is sort of struggling through a divorce um, in different facets. Um, and it's really interesting, um, even though we all have uh, different business models or perspectives, maybe. Um, you know, the fact that we're all sort of united for, you know, in this one kind of goal is really kind of interesting. Yeah. And, and what I didn't realize, like I went into it with this very specific person purpose to help people. Right. What I didn't realize and what it opened up my eyes to and I, credit to, I guess it's a, a Jan Cato, a Justin and a Stephanie Paleo uh, that started the group. It's just I, what I didn't realize was like all this effort goes into a wedding. Yep. Right? And you get everybody involved from, you know, the flowers to the orchestra, whatever it is, the band, the DJ, Yep. all of these different, the priests, if you're religious or the rabbis. Um, and then all of a sudden you go through a divorce, which unfortunately is more common than not. Yep. Um, and the reality is that you don't have a team when you typically go through a divorce. Um, and you need just as many people involved in that where 
you know, nobody's taken advantage of. Um, and like you said, I want to hear about your side of it because uh, divorces are hard. Um, and, you know, I'm going, I'm helping a client right now and it's the weirdest thing because there's so much emotion and you wonder if you're trying to make the best decisions for people, yep. <laughs> but they don't allow it to happen for whatever reason, right? So um, if you want to just kind of uh, share on that, um, it, and I want to, if I could, and I'm sorry about this, if we could go back, how did you get this kind of background getting into counseling or social work? Tell us that story. So um, I uh, went to college the first time and um, dropped out. And I was there to please my parents instead of, you know, really doing what I wanted to do. And what was your first, what was your first major? When you dropped out communications all right there you go so um i went to school very late in life and um when i had gotten divorced uh, myself i was divorced by 35 i was married at uh 26 divorced by 35 and i worked every you know minimum wage job i could find um you know sometimes three at a time to pay my bills and keep food on the table. And, you know, during that time, you know, you, you develop a lot of humility, but it was a really scary um, time for me because typically in single earner households, um, you know, if there's a husband and a wife, and if the wife is the, you know, the person staying home with the children, uh, you know, the husband winds up making all the financial decisions. And so, Sometimes, you know, especially in a divorce where the husband may be in charge of selling the house and the wife doesn't have any place to go and she may or may not have a support system around her because sometimes it's very common that, you know, if you have couple friends, the couple friends all sort of disappear because they don't want to have to pick sides and they don't want to get drawn into your, you know, mess, whatever that is. So um, it's it's a very scary time and you do need solid people around you, um, you know, someone to help you find a house or sell a house if you need to and somebody to help you with your, uh, you know, financial things. If you have investments or stocks and bonds that have to be split up, you need someone there to help you, you know, like if everything and get separated in the divorce you need someone there to help you like make decisions and um so I really um struggled with that at the beginning and you know all, gradually I kind of built you know a little a small network around me which was great but it's a very very scary time and women are typically filled with so much shame um about either being in this situation or, you know, there's a lot of anger involved as well. Sometimes there may be, you know, fighting over parenting issues. Um, so there's all kinds of, you're on a roller coaster of emotions. And a lot of times it's really good to have somebody who's neutral to talk to. No, and it's it's so hard, right? It's um, you know, you you need somebody to look out for you, and it's like you said, um, I've seen it go both ways, um, where people are like, hey, you know what? Like you said, I'm the breadwinner. You know what? I can always make more money. I will drag this out, right? Right? Because you know it's uncomfortable and everything else. Where it's, um, I think that one of the things that you talked about, we we were talking before off camera, but you know. The same things that make a relationship work versus why people get divorced, go for it. What are the top three things? Communication, collaboration, and cooperation. Yeah. And it's uh, it's really, you know, it's kind of, listen, we all have shit days. Let's call a spade a spade. And, um, you know, this whole concept right. of, hey, you know, I, I've learned uh, through, I guess, some recovery that or in, in inward looking stuff is that when I get upset at somebody and I was telling my wife this and it wasn't pointing her out in any way. It's just, you know, we communicate with a lot of people and sometimes you get upset. And it's like, why are you getting upset? 
right? Because when you look at it, if you're pointing the finger, you got three of them pointing your way. You only right. got one point the other way. And it's like, do, am I guilty of doing that? And on some level you are, right? Because otherwise it wouldn't bother you. You know, it's kind of like this trickle down effect and justification, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's an inward look. And it's like, you know, I try to learn from it and who, you know, who you want to be and who you don't want to be. Um, that's, I remember when my child was born and I, I reached out to, you know, a guy that was a mentor in my life. Um, and, you know, it's like, you know, any advice, you know, for the new dad, he goes, well, I'll give you the best advice that I can give you is look at the dads that you admire, take the best pieces and bits of them. And don't look at, you know, the people that you don't admire, you know, I always hate when, you know, like uh, a, a parent, you know, kind of like talks down to their child or something. You know, they're kids. They're supposed to be kids. We were talking about this, you know, what are the 20s for? To make a shitload of mistakes so you don't make them when you turn 30, right? <laughs> you know, and unfortunately, you know, we, we were also talking about the depression and anxiety and it's like, we're not perfect creatures. We're, you know, we live in a world where everybody's supposed to be perfect. Nobody can make a mistake. And, you know, everybody's being critiqued on it. God forbid you say this or that. I'm like, you know, where's the humility? Like, you know, you know, the, the old adage of, uh, you know, he who makes no mistakes can cast the first stone. Right. right. And fuck off. <laughs> you know, like seriously, you know, like you find me that perfect person. I'll, t I'll find you a liar. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, it's, um, and I embrace what you do. You're really helping people. I'm just kind of a cog sometimes, um, you know, and it's, it's funny because I look at my real estate business really about relationships. Um, and you know, if it's a personal situation, I've had friends that said, Hey, we didn't pick you as a realtor because you know, we're too, we're too connected. Right. And right. unfortunately, and I don't know what your history is, but most people have to make a decision as to what side they're on, especially when it's nasty and contested. That's right. <laughs> you know, and it's, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I hate making that decision. And, you know, it's just kind of, I always say it naturally plays out. You know, and I don't know, is that kind of common? Uh, you know, it's, I don't deal with a lot of these, so. Well, sometimes it doesn't naturally play out and you need, you know, somebody like a mediator, like, you know, Jan Cato, who's a mediator to kind of jump in and help. Um, well, I'm just talking from a personal level, right? Like you're, you're friends with the wife and the husband, you know, somebody did something stupid, you know, it's. I, I have I have two friends. I don't talk to either one of them anymore because I went a little bit batshit crazy during COVID. But, um, you know, he left his wife and would disappear for a month, month and a half at a time. He'd go to Thailand. He'd go to Mexico. And oh wow, well, dude, what are you doing? You got three kids and a wife. Like, <laughs> you know, and, and again, the finger pointing is always so easy to do. And you know, well, she did this, and I'm like, really. Well, and that's why I said, you know, a lot of times, you know, the friends will kind of, you know, disappear for a while because they don't either want to have to get, you know, forced into taking sides or get sucked into, you know, who did what to whom. Right. Um, so it it can be a very lonely time for somebody, you know, who's divorced. Well, I, I, I look at it, I look at it, I agree with you. There, there's a, you know, this goes back to that you have to crack some eggs. There's a reality check. Right. You really have to, hey, listen, what the life that I'm living is not working. Right. You know, maybe my expectations were wrong, you know, and again, this is a little bit different than, hey, listen, you know, we're communicating, we're collaborating, we're cooperating, we're just having a fight, right? <laughs> Versus like, dude, you, you're off the deep end right now. And my mission is different than your mission. You know, it's like, it's funny because I'm a Tony Robbins guy. And I went to a four day, I, I went to a four day seminar with my wife and I had, I'd listened to a lot of the stuff before I actually went to the event. And I picked some people's brains and haphazardly somebody that I did real estate with in New York. I saw him post a video of him on Facebook going into a Tony Robbins event and like it is just you know there's a there's a there's just chemistry there 
and so much energy when you go to some of these events. And uh, I was like, what's that about? I was like, I, I'm thinking about going. He goes, are you married? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, I've got to bring your wife. I'm like, why? She's not really into him. And he goes, listen, I went to the event by myself. I came back. I was super psyched. My life was changed. My wife's like, I don't know what Kool-Aid you drank, but I'm not on board. So what wound up happening? He had to go back with his wife. Right. And then I went to kind of like a feeder event where somebody tried to talk you. This is it's going to be a life changing event. And I meet some lady and I'm like, you ever go to one of these events? She's like, I went there 10 years ago. It saved my marriage. Right. So fast forward, another guy that I meet, he's like. Did you ever go to Tony Robbins? Event? He goes, yeah, he goes, I'm thinking about going. He goes, make sure you invite your wife. Same story. I went by myself. My wife wasn't drinking the Kool-Aid. Then I had to go back again. And guess what? You know, we we talked about this, but again, this is the communication, the cooperation, collaboration, right? Right. So I lied. You know, I didn't lie to my wife, but I said, hey, listen, you know, if you come to this event with me, if you don't like it, we can always get our money back after the second day and we can just make it a vacation. <laughs> it's all it took. By day three, we're like thanking each other that we were going through this process together. We're crying together. We're laughing together. We're just so jazzed up and it changed the way our relationship was. And, you know, like uh, you remember the shallow how moment Uh huh. <laughs> where he's like demons be gone or whatever it is. Um, we had one of those. Right. And it was like, you know, um, without spoiling it for people that haven't been to a UPW, but it's like we stopped drinking together. Oh, wow. You know, and we- That's we, awesome. We literally went, I think, six years without eating meat um, either. And, uh, you know, for health reasons, I've started eating meat. So has she, but not nearly at the scale that we used to. But, you know, that to me was like such a significant point in our life. Absolutely. Um, you know, and Getting it was- Getting healthy together is a big deal. It's 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 beautiful though. Like, but- I, I always tell people that are close to my life, I'm like, my relationships with my wife is like, I'm a high school kid. Because that to me was like when, like I had those wonderful relationships, it was carefree. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and somebody asked me this, I was on somebody else's podcast. And uh, what, what if there's one thing that you could recommend to people, one one piece of advice or some sort of, thing that you know and they put me on the spot and i had to think about it for a little bit but i have one that i'll share with you um but if you have anything that you're thinking of that jumps to your head please um you got to give me a setting i i think i would um if i was in front of if i was doing a couple's counseling i would most likely say don't ever be afraid to open up to your spouse See, that to me opens up a can of worms. You know, it's like, sorry, we, we always talk about like white lies and then flat out lies. Like this, 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 this pair of pants make my ass look big. Nah, you look great. <laughs> well, okay. No, not specifically. I, I'm talking about if something is bothering you, like, don't hold it in um because men will typically hold stuff in oh we, we're combustibles that's right we blow up <laughs> that's right over nothing and that's why that's why i say don't hold stuff in um you know typically are one of two things it's either you know there is really like some kind of a trust issue there or um they're trying to protect you know somebody or something well, my, it's funny that you said that because my wife's extremely sensitive. So I always look at it this way, right? It's like when I tell my daughter, hey, like, because I have nothing to do, now is a good time for me to hang out with you, do a puzzle, play a game or whatever. Um, the reality is that it's a two-way street. Like my daughter might be like, hey, you know what? I'm watching my my TV show. I don't want to, I don't want to hang out with you right now. Right. Just because it's a good time for me doesn't make it a good time for her. For her. And my expectations that, you know what, you know, put that ego in the back pocket and uh, kind of find something else to do. 
uh, or be a better dad and, you know, hang out with her and, you know, become the, you know, become the person that you should be. Um, you know, I, and I appreciate that. It's because um, I do hold a lot of stuff back. You know, it's because I don't, I don't, I'm, like you said, as far as I'm concerned, protector, provider, and, you know, try to be the best dad, best husband, you know, uh, possible. Uh, my, 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 my favorite thing to always go to is be yourself. Everybody else is taken. And, um, you know, the, 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 the one that I've learned is the 20, 40, 60 rule at up to the age of 20, you tend to, uh, care, worry about what everybody else thinks about you. Uh huh. When you turn 40, you stop worrying about what everybody thinks of you. And then when you turn 60, you realize nobody thought about you in the first place. So you you spend a whole lifetime, you know, um, worried about things, right? And, and again, I bring this into my real estate business as well. Um, you were asked, you know, we were talking about it. Like people always ask me, what makes you different, right? And it's like, if they were referred to me, you know, it's your general demeanor, knowing that we're going to get whatever we start finished which is like you know if you're buying a house we're going to find you a house if we're going to sell your house we're going to sell you a house now circumstances are going to be circumstances i don't control that um but you know we're going to do a great job but it's it's making hard things look easy because i don't care what you know if i have to make that extra phone call <laughs> if i have to personally pick up dog shit from somebody's basement because they're not ugh, whatever i mean i've done that i've done all of this right and uh i saw another person today i was like what i admire is like i've been through so much hell <laughs> you could you know it's like the phoenix rising from the ashes and you're like fucking life's good you know stop worrying about things you know we don't control it you know if if you're religious in any way, you know, it's all in God's hands. You just got to trust the journey sometimes. That's true. Yeah. One of my so, favorite mottos is it, it is what it is. <laughs> it, it, it it really is what it is. And, uh, you know, just kind of move on. And, uh, you know, it's a, I, I just wanted to personally thank you. Um, you know, when we met, I, I remember on your business card, it's a psychotherapist. And I'm like, oh, can't wait to hear some of these stories. You know, and it's like, not not stories, but I think, you know, we, we kind of share things. You know, people trust us enough to get us involved, you know, good or bad. And, uh, you know, we just make make good decisions or our best decisions. Uh, my, my friend always says to me, he goes, as long as your intentions are pure and they're good, yeah, you know, the end result doesn't really much matter. Um, you know, and, and if we can learn from it in the long run, so be it. So in my business, I work really hard to create a, you know, an environment where people feel comfortable um enough to share. Um mm -hmm. so that's probably that would be my my one thing. Right. And I, I want to ask you something. There was something about uh your your company, it's women only, right? Or is it correct? Uh, it 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 is women only. Um, however, with couples counseling, clearly it's men and women. Okay. And what what you know, what's your what's your ratio? Is it more like couples counseling or like you know what you know, I have probably almost it's almost a 50-50 ratio of you know, I have single women that I, you know, help with just daily struggles or things they want to change versus couples. Okay. What's the best way for people to reach out to you? Um, they can contact uh, Lotus Blossom uh, and the, the phone number is 732-440-8166. Or they can email me at Kate A at Lotus Blossom Psychotherapy dot com. Right. And you're doing great stuff. I mean, um, I don't, thankfully, I don't know anybody personally that's needed you yet. Um, but, you know, there's there's certainly people in the mix. And, uh, you know, as, as long as I have people like you in my corner, I, I'm good. You know, like I always say that it's not just personally, but, you know, anybody that's struggling, um, you know, First step is always admitting that you have issues and then that's right. 
being open to having people help you. So that's right. Yeah. Kate, I love you so much. Uh, Thank you so much. This was great. <laughs> all right. So I hope you had fun. Uh, Kate, reach out to her. If you know anybody that's struggling right now that could use her help, um, you know, especially, you know, let's call spade a spade, divorce situations. We have a whole team set up. So uh, we're here. Um, keep us in mind. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank Bye. you.